Hello and welcome to Box, where we unbox, review and demonstrate the latest tech. Today we have with us the Creality Ender 3 S1 Plus 3D Printer. Creality is best known for creating low-cost, user-friendly 3D printers that deliver clean prints. With most users being happy with the results of the Ender 3 S1 and S1 Plus models, Creality have created this hybrid model, combining the best aspects of both into one efficient machine. Though this model costs a little bit more than both of its predecessors, you do get those added luxuries that let you control your project in a refined way. So what do we get out of the Plus model? Well, you do get a sturdier metal construction, along with a few of the premium aspects of the Pro variant, like the LCD touchscreen. But the main draw here is the much larger print bed, coming in at 300 by 300 by 300 millimeters, as opposed to the 220 millimeter dimensions, meaning that you have much more space to print bigger, single print projects without breaking it up. I found that these much more beginner intermediate printers are great for those who want to build prints effortlessly rather than spending all of their time curating the settings for custom designs. As a relative beginner with a small amount of experience, I'll be taking you through the assembly process and how easy it is to set up, downloading and using the Creality software as well as using Cura for a custom print, and more importantly testing out various print designs to see just how user friendly the plus variant is for the average user. Opening up the box, printer assembly can look a little overwhelming, but it's not as complicated as it looks. The technical aspects are already assembled, with the printer broken down into a print bed, X and Y axis frame, print nozzle, LCD display and filament rack and sensor. It also comes with a large accessories bag, holding print tools like pliers, a scraper and a nozzle cleaner, along with all of the screws and tools needed to put the machine together. You'll also find an SD card and SD card reader amongst all of these accessories. It largely just holds a few of the default prints to get you started and get to know how your printer works, but it's also there for loading new G-codes onto the printer that you've built yourself or the ones you've found online. Something to think about when starting a print is what filament you need to use. It does support a wide range of filament types from ABS, TPU and PETG, but the most common type used is PLA. I'll be using the Sunlu 1.75mm PLA filament, which is great for a range of designs as it's on a universal spool size and gives you a pretty smooth consistent finish. Now Creality have provided a small amount of filament to try out straight away if you don't have filament already, but I suggest getting a large spool of quality filament anyway as then you have plenty of the same material to make one consistent print and not have to worry about running out. Assembling the printer takes about 30 minutes and with the help of the step-by-step -step assembly video, I was confident that the setup was done right the first time. The print bed and base are already pre-assembled, leaving you to attach the frame using the screws and allen keys provided. Just make sure that you follow the steps carefully to avoid attaching the frame back to front. The most fiddly part here is attaching the extruder, as there are quite a few small screws to secure it to the x-axis frame. But other than that, it was plain sailing, slotting the spool arm into place on the top and attaching the cradle and control display onto the side. Of course, the frame, extruder and filament sensor all require attaching the connection wires to the right ports on the base. Again, to make sure I got it right, I just followed the setup instruction video for this, but as most of the wires are labelled with their correct corresponding ports, it was easy to find them all and plug them into the right place. Now it's ready to go, I was able to place the printer onto my desk beside the PC without taking up too much room. It measures at about 655mm high, 535mm wide and 557mm deep, so you will need a large desk or a good sized space in mind nearby for the perfect placement. If like me you're still relatively new to the printing process, then this printer should be right up your street. Leveling is one of the trickiest parts of 3D printing to get right, so I was glad to see that it includes a CR touch auto leveling that measures the bed height along 16 points to automatically get the print height correct. Now it's not completely automatic in a sense because you still need to adjust the bed further using the red adjustment wheels under the bed to get the z-axis compensation right for smooth extrusion. This part is a little trickier as I did find it difficult to try and adjust the wheels underneath the bed without fumbling and I still had to judge it based on my own measurements, making sure that the nozzle was just at the depth of a sheet of paper at the five points on the bed. But once this was done it was just a case of preheating the nozzle and print bed, inserting the filament through the sensor and into the nozzle and setting the home point in the ready menu. For the first print, I'll start by printing one of the base models from the SD card included with the machine. 
As there's less risk of anything going wrong using these Creality prints, you can just print them blind straight from the card, but I found it much easier to download the Creality slicing software and open the prints up in the preview window in the program to see exactly what the model is, what scale it's at, and if it needed any supports or additional adjustments to the settings. I also like how you can slice the print to get a rough estimate of print time before setting the print going. Now I chose the rabbit as it was quite small, and as the print was set to take as little as an hour, it was the best test print to go with. Now with the print bed and nozzle up to temperature, let's open the print and set it going to see what it comes out with. As it's such a small print, it took as little as 50 minutes, which I thought was pretty efficient. Though saying that, despite the small print, the details are pretty clean, especially here on the front feet. I love the scale and overall distinctive shape, and despite not getting into the settings in any detail, the print did really well straight out of the box. Unfortunately though, there are a few imperfections which is sad to see, like this odd scarring effect on one side of the body and some dimpling on the ears. Even as a beginner myself, I know at home 3D prints can always be experimental, especially when factoring in levelling, scale, filament temperature and build, but I like that the Ender 3 does seem to give you a little more support like including auto levelling, video instructions and these starter prints to help you find your feet. I tried one more of the starter prints just to see if the quality of the rabbit wasn't just a fluke. I chose the end of Bitcoin and though the print went okay and it was very fast only taking as little as 20 minutes, sadly the final print wasn't very clean. The edge was visibly warped, the cross hatching on the inside was inconsistent and there was a clear seam where the print changed layers, but overall I thought the lettering was okay and it finished the print entirely for a second time which was a relief. Now comes the harder part, printing something that somebody else has designed from one of the chosen community sites. What the Ender 3 S1 Plus really does well is effortless printing, something that doesn't require too much tinkering unless you play around and experiment without worrying about the finer details. With at home 3D printing being around for a while now, there's a lot of choice across various community sites for ready-made G-codes that print pretty well without much adjustment. For my custom print, I checked out a variety of models on Thingiverse, so I thought I'd try this basic dinosaur design. I loaded it into the Creality Slicer to check the preview, but because it's such a delicate, thin and tall design, I knew it needed supports. Now I have no experience with supports so far, and though I can add my own custom ones, I thought it was safe to go with the automated set to avoid anything going wrong. However, after two attempts, the print was simply failing on the base level and I immediately felt overwhelmed with the mounting options and not knowing how to fix it. Now the Creality Slicer is pretty similar to some of the other popular slicing programs out there and it all depends on what you're more familiar with. Personally, I prefer the tools in Cura as I know it just a little bit better, so I switched over to adjust the support settings for the dinosaur. But I feel it failed just because of some structural reasons, as well as having supports that were overly too thick, so I abandoned this and decided to try a more sturdy design that was better suited to my skill level and would be less likely to break during the print. Settling on this low poly totodile from Thingiverse, I played around with the supports, adding more room between the points where the support met the model. I also had a little help when problem solving the print failures and after correcting the belt tension on the Y axis, adjusting the bed temperature and bringing the nozzle lower to the print bed, I set the print going for a final time. So after a few hours, the result was drastically different from the others. This final print gave me the best indication of the best quality that this printer can produce. Even though the print is quite angular, the shapes are still well defined and sharp, leaving no visible imperfections on the model anywhere. I love how smooth the texture is, you can hardly even see the layers at all. Even the base is smooth and clean, almost hiding the fact that it was a filament print. I was incredibly happy with the results here, and it gives me so much more confidence to attempt some of the more complicated prints in the future. To really put this printer to the test. It just goes to show that when you finally get everything right, the Ender 3 S1 Plus can deliver a professional quality print time after time. But despite all the failures, I wasn't disheartened by the amount of failed prints it had taken me for me to get a few good outcomes. One of the best things about 3D printing with this printer I felt was the whole trial and error process. 
As the Ender 3 S1 Plus is relatively low cost to buy, I thought this took the pressure off having to create something perfect, letting me feel comfortable with starting again and attempting problem solving on my own as it's so simple to use. But even if you're not quite getting things right as a beginner, the beauty of it all is that there's a whole community out there willing to offer help if you need it, and most of the problems I encountered could easily be fixed by simply checking out forums and threads across various sites for the solutions to my problems, and most of all enjoying the process along the way. So after using this printer for a few days, I found it a great tool for testing out custom prints and seeing what it can achieve. For the low cost point, it's perfect for a beginner as well as a more experienced user. Failed prints hardly took any time to correct thanks to the auto leveling and fine adjustments, and the interface was so quick to make your way around that I know exactly what settings the printer's running at before I even start a print, removing any potential for mistakes early on. There are limits to what you can achieve for sure, but mostly the possibilities stretch as far as your imagination. It's a brilliant, low cost, easy to use printer that produces high quality prints even at its basic level. And even though it takes a little experience to push it to its full potential and produce prints to a professional level, mostly if you just want to have fun and create prints that fuel your passions, then this is the perfect tool for delivering your creative side. So what are your thoughts on the Creality Ender 3 S1 Plus? Let us know in the comments below, and if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Box, where we have plenty of hands-on reviews on the latest tech. And as always, thanks for watching.